children. Welcome to Tuesday, October 20th, 2020. That's a lot of 20s. And the way 2020 is going, I don't know if we need many, many more 20s. Um, okay. Today we're going to work on um, a 5W1H summary. It's a quick little way to summarize a reading passage that we've done. And this will help with central ideas and supporting details that we started in I Ready next week and that we're going to do tomorrow and that you're going to continue doing after we watch the Bridge Terabithia movie and you write a persuasive or an opinion essay for me on it. We've watched um, a video about uh, Columbus Day because that's the article we were going to read. We've watched a video about why we celebrate Columbus Day from History Channel. And then together we're going to read an article about that there was no uh, fracas in the Columbus Day article this, and the Columbus Day celebration this year in Pueblo. But I want to show you how to do one of these 5W1Hs. So I'm going to read a different article from the Pueblo Chieftain for you, and I'm going to show you an example of how to do one of these. So I'm going to read about voter turnout in Pueblo is soaring by Anthony A. Mestis of the Pueblo Chieftain on October 16, 2020. More than 10,000 Pueblo voters have already cast their ballots for the November 3rd elections. Pueblo County Kirk and Recorder Gilbert Bo Ortiz said Friday. This comes as the Colorado Secretary of State, Jenna Griswold, announced Thursday that more than 300,000 Colorado voters have cast their ballots weeks before Election Day. Griswold announced the news in a tweet adding that the number was 24 times more than at this point in 2016. We have 10,366 ballots out of 108,000 so far. That's in less than a week. We are killing it, Ortiz said. Pueblo Democrats have submitted 5,510 ballots so far, while Republicans have turned in two... 1,069 ballots. Unaffiliated voters have turned in 2,640 ballots as of Friday. Now, some of you may stop and ask, what does it mean by unaffiliated? Unaffiliated means you do not register as a Democrat or a Republican. It used to be in Colorado that to vote in a primary for a Republican or a Democratic primary, to say that you wanted Donald Trump or Joe Biden to be the candidate for the Republicans and the Democrats, respectfully, you had to be registered as a Democrat or Republican to be able to vote for them in the primary. Colorado does not do that anymore. As an unaffiliated voter, you can choose to vote for either one or the or, the Democrat or the Republican. I think there's so much confusion out there about what's going to happen on November 3rd with Facebook and Twitter and Instagram giving us all different information because there is a different mean for every state, Ortiz said. I think when people get their ballots, they want to have a plan together and to get their voting over with. I see a lot of relief in the faces of voters who are dropping off their ballots. Ortiz said he feels there's a lot of anxiety about about the election and people want to get past it. We encourage everyone to vote early. If we can have 90% of the ballots counted before 7 p.m. on election night, those results will be pretty strong, Ortiz said. Ortiz said the early turnout is far more than it was for the presidential election in 2016. We didn't hit the 10,000 marker until 20, in 2016 until 12 days before the election. And here we are 18 days until election day with these numbers, he said. Okay, so after I read that, I would go to this 5W1H um, worksheet that's a Google Doc that you're going to work on. But I created one for myself for this article. Again, the who is what it's about. It's about Pueblo voters, Democrats, Republicans, unaffiliated, Bo Ortiz, he's our county clerk. What is it about? Pueblo voters are getting their ballots turned in early. 
when does it take place? Well, the article took place on October 15, 2020, so we're going to count that. Where does it take place? In Pueblo, Colorado. I can also put Pueblo County. Because, again, Pueblo County voters can get this in because Bo Ortiz is the county clerk. So he's counting not just the city of Pueblo, but Pueblo County. So things like Rye and Pueblo West on the Mesa. Why does it take place? Why does the what happen? So that means why are Pueblo voters getting their ballots turned in early? Well, people don't want to screw up getting their votes in. There's a fear that an anxiety that if they wait till the end, their vote may not be counted. How does it take place? How did or does the what and the why happen? People are turning in their ballots early at voter drop-off boxes. Okay, then I can't remember where I left off. <laughs> I left off at the how. Sorry, I had to do something. Then on the summary statement, so we're going to take the who, the what, the when, the where, the why, and the how. And we're going to create a little summary statement with it, which I did. On Thursday, October 15, 2020, in Pueblo, Colorado, Pueblo County Clerk Bo Ortiz said that over 10,000 Pueblo voters have turned in their ballots already. People are turning in their ballots at drop-off boxes because they want to make sure their vote is in and counted. So that's just a nice way to summarize an article in one, two, three, four sentences um, to figure out what was the central idea of this article, and we even added some supporting details for it. So that's what you guys are going to do um, right now. I've created an assignment here for Tuesday. You're going to watch this video about the history of Columbus Day. And then you're going to click on this Pueblo Chieftain article. And you're going to follow along as I read this article to you. And then I'm going to teach you a little trick to um, be able to refer back and forth to this article while you're doing your 5W1H summary. But I am going to. Open up this article a little different. Okay, please follow along as I read. The Pueblo Chieftain. In its 115th year, Columbus Day celebrated without protest. By John Pompey, the Pueblo Chieftain. October 12, 2020. The twin banners hanging on either side of the towering monument hold posted words that effectively summed up all that followed. We came to America because we heard the streets were paved with gold. When we got here, we found out three things. <laughs> First, the streets weren't paved with gold. Second, they weren't paved at all. And third, we expected to pave, we were expected to pave them. And we did. Although no longer a state holiday, Columbus Day was, for the 115th consecutive year, celebrated by Puebloans of Italian heritage and other nationalities in the shadow of the Christopher Columbus Piazza in the Mesa Junction. Themed pride and tradition on Abrando Avenue since 1905, Monday's Feet focused on opportunities afforded to immigrants of all races in the aftermath of Columbus's historic voyage to the Americas. And while there was a strong police presence for the first time in recent memory, not a single protester attempted to disrupt the celebration. The moment, however, was the, was the site. The monument, however, sorry, was the site of an act of vandalism the day prior when red paint and tomatoes were thrown onto it during the early morning hours. 
That incident, however, has not noted was not noted during the program, and the absence of protesters was mentioned only in passing. There were, however, verbal digs at history revisionists, as well as those who would have had the monument erected in 1905 through contributions from Italian-American organizations throughout the nation removed from the Mesa Junction. I can tell you one thing, said Frank Cirillo, who has attended the local Columbus Day commemoration for half a century. This statue will never come down, never. In his keynote address, John Carocci, Order of the Sons of Italy Grand Lodge State President, told the gallery of about 125 the monument is dedicated to the explorer-born Cristoforo Colombo, symbolizes what he did for the world, linking two separate parts of the globe so that people all over the world would have a place to escape hunger, political and religious persecution, and a lack of land on which to raise their families. Italian immigrants were not looking for a free ride, they wanted to give back to the country that took them in. Carocci expressed displeasure at the way scholars and educators continue to misrepresent and rewrite the history of this nation and its founding. We now have a generation with many who think that America is systematically bad, Carocci said. We now have a generation with many who support tearing down statues and burning and losing businesses. We have a generation who think history as portrayed by credible historians is not truth. And this misrepresentation of our history has been particularly damaging to Italian Americans. Far from being a genocidal maniac, a rapist, or eliminator of races, Columbus Carucci said, had a passion to turn as many individuals into Christians as he could. In his remarks, Republican State Senator Larry Crowder of Alamosa said he stands in solidarity with both Columbus Day and Italian-Americans. That Columbus Day was removed as a state holiday is a straight racist issue against Italian-Americans. Crowder told those assembled, I strongly admire the Italian-Americans for what they've done, especially for of what they've done in Southern Colorado. Crowder termed the current cultural landscape a race to the bottom. You have those at the bottom trying to pull the rest of us down. And we should not do that. We should say that we are proud Americans. We can't go back 500 years into history and change it. Even though there were some dark spots along the way, it happens. That's the way the world history is. The state senator then encouraged those who would see Colum the Columbus Monument remain in place not to give up this fight. We should stand proud of not only your heritage, but also, but all of our heritages. Mark Iliff, who serves on the Pueblo City Council, was similar, similarly supportive of those who share Columbus's heritage. This is a day to be celebrated, Iliff said. Celebrating Columbus Day and your Italian heritage is a Pueblo and national tradition that must never be diminished, ever. Like Carocci, Iliff took aim at those who attempted to reinterpret history to fit their agenda. The problem is, even though they try to rewrite history, it doesn't make what they write true, he said. The fact is, Columbus did find a way to the New World, a path for all the oppressed in Europe to come to the New World and to flourish and do exactly what Italian-Americans have done, make Pueblo and, Un and the United States a better place. Had he not done that, he wouldn't be here this morning. We wouldn't have the America we have today. And that is something we must cherish, hold dear, and pass down from generation to generation. In the city brokered mediation between pro and anti Columbus Monument factions over the future of the Piazza, businessman and community advocate Dan DeRose has represented the former. The Pueblo native said he is driven by the monument countless times without giving it and what it represents much thought. But during this process, it's really opened my eyes to the fight that needs to be fought, DeRose said, and to those people that are in our country trying to change it, not just against Italians, but against all things that stand for good and stand for positive. 
So I'm here. So I'm in the fight now. And I'm in it to the end. And I encourage all of you to join in the fight as well. Because we need to stand for our heritage, stand for what we believe in, and most importantly, stand together as Puebloans, as an Italians, and have a strong, clear voice as to what we're trying to communicate to the community. In DeRose's estimation, the core of that message is the sacrifice made by those who, like Columbus, cross the sea to a new and unknown world. Our forefathers took a lot of risk. They came to a country that knew they knew nothing about. They left everything that they loved and knew behind. They came here and started a new life, he said. And that wasn't easy. They fought and they scratched and they woke up every day and went to work and they put their head down and continued to work. Throughout the program, appreciation was expressed to local law enforcement for their continued service during a trying and troublesome time. I applaud the police department for what they do, Crowder said. If you look at it, a lot of those at the bottom are trying to pull our police force down to their level. And it's not going to happen. Monday's commemoration was hosted by Gino Carleo and Al Spinuzzi, representing the Order of the Sons of Italy Pueblo Lodge. In lieu of the traditional Columbus Day dinner at the Arts Center, celebrants were invited to the law, to that lodge for a two-go serving of spaghetti and meatballs. Okay, so what you kiddos are going to do now is you're going to go into this 5W, I hit a button wrong. You're going to go into this 5W1H assignment right here. What I would suggest is that when you click on your assignment, you see how it says edit, um, and you can open up the assignment to make it a different um, page like this. I would do that so that way you have two tabs open. You have this tab that has your assignment, and you have a tab that has the article that you can get back into. Is a 15-point assignment, one point for the who, what, when, where, why, how, um, 10 points for, again, summarizing the article, which I will gladly help you summarize as you're working in class. As always, if you need any help, please ask me in class, remote learners. Please unmute yourself and ask me if you need help. Absent learners, please message me on Schoolology. Thank you very much, Pirates, and have a good day.